Today, what I'm going to be talking about uh, is I'm going to talk about communication. And uh, Vic talked a little bit about, um, I was going to talk a little bit about social media. I, I like to, to feel um, the crowd, so to speak. And I wanted to see what Vic was going to talk about and then kind of piggyback a little bit off of that. And, and he did a great job in segueing into what I wanted to talk to you guys about today, which was effective communication um, and how to improve your leadership, your teamwork um, and communication. Because when you have communication and you're able to effectively communicate, then you are able to um, really excel in any part of your life. So I'll touch on a little bit of social media throughout. Um, it won't be as formal, but um, for the most part, we'll be talking about communication today. All right, so some of the topics that I'll cover, again, um, well, core values and why they're important. I'm gonna talk about communication. I'm gonna talk about personality profile. And some of you may have uh, done some type of personality profiles in the past, and I may have done some of this with you uh, at the college as well. But for those of you who are new on this call, hopefully um, this will be interesting to you as well. And then of course, how you connect, how you can connect with myself and my team as well. So I always like to start off my presentations with, um, with core values. And I believe this to be something that although um, at, right now in the stage where you guys are at being students, you may not think that this is important, but I wish that somebody talked to me about core values a long time ago, because if you can really figure out what your core values are, what's important to you, it will help you to align with um, the right people. It will help you to align with the right practice, your right team. And I want you to imagine when you meet somebody for the first time, usually you get this feeling of like, oh, you know, there's something about this person that I just, you know, you walk away feeling like you've known them forever. And that's actually how I felt when I met Vic. We had a conversation and within five minutes, it's almost like this incredible connection where I felt like I, I knew him and I almost trusted him immediately. And because what I soon realized was it's because our core values were very much in alignment. And on the flip side, when you meet people who you walk away and you think, I don't really like that person, <laughs> or there's something about that person that I just, it doesn't feel right. Well, chances are it's because their core values don't necessarily align with yours. And so what does that mean? So for us, my team, my company, anytime I want to onboard somebody to the Inspire Dental team, I want them to represent the core values that are important to me, to the company, and how I want to represent our company as a whole. And so I'm going to share, share our, our core values just so that gives you an idea of what that looks like. So for us, teamwork, very important. You know, we're a real collaborative group, collaborative organization, and I like to encourage our team um, because that creates productivity as well as creativity. And when you can all work together, there's a quote that says that alone you can go uh, fast, but together you can go far. And I truly, truly believe that if you play the, um, the infinite game or the long game, that's really where, uh, where big su successes come. Another thing, energize. We're very energetic. I like people on the team who have um, enthusiasm. You know, every day bring your A game. And I highly recommend implementing this, you know, in your studies and, you know, when you're, when you're at school, when you're going for the interview, when you're, uh, when you're working. If you can bring your A game, no matter what, you are always, always going to be desirable and stand out. Active ownership, this is another thing that's really important for us um, to empower your roles, your projects, and the clients that we represent. You know, I don't like to micromanage. I like to give ownership to the team so that they feel a sense of ownership themselves because when people feel like they're a part of something, they naturally want to do more. So that's really, really important to me and my team. And that might be something that might be important to you when deciding where you want to work. If you want to work in an environment where you feel like you're a part of something bigger and that you have a little piece of ownership that's going to make a difference, then those are things that you're going to look for when you're looking for an opportunity. Integrity, always. We bring quality, honesty, 
uh, backed by strong moral principles with all of our relationships. I want you to think about this. How you do anything is how you do everything. So if you can work with honesty and integrity always, whether somebody's looking or not, you will create those habits. It will emulate you and people will want to work with you. Win-win. So we strive for successful win-win uh, on both sides. So meaning that we want to make sure that, um, that it's a win for our clients, our candidates, and of course, for our company as well. So when we're making a placement or we're connecting candidates with uh, clients, so let's say dental assistant or hygienist, we're helping them find an opportunity. We want to make sure that it's a win-win for the hygienist or the assistant or the dentist. And we also want to make sure it's a win for our clients as well. When, ev when everybody wins, that's a true win. When somebody walks away and, and they're not feeling too good about it, it's, it's not a win at all for anybody. We want to make sure that um, when we're working with people, it's not just transactional, it's long-term. And so what I recommend is you thinking about that every day in your life. If you can um, look out for the best interest of other people, I promise you that success will follow. Again, when you look out for other people, how you do anything is how you do everything. If, if, you, if people feel like you're looking out for their best interests, then the law of reciprocity will kick in and they will inherently want to look out for you as well. And that all ties into teamwork as well. And then finally, it's really important to make it fun. You know, a lot of time that we spend, the majority is going to be at work. Right now, for you guys, it's uh, you're in school. The majority of the time that you have is is uh, online learning now. But uh, make it fun. Have a, add a little bit of levity to your day. Um, of course, there are some very serious times, but at the end of the day, you're working with teams of people every day in close, um, tight spaces. Make sure that uh, that you are having a little bit of fun as well. So, this quote. I love this quote because it's so true. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Now, this, this is in everything that you do. Now, of course, your clinical skills, um, all of the skills and all the education that you're learning is absolutely, absolutely important. But if the patient doesn't feel like you care about them, they don't care how much you know. If they don't feel some sort of connection, they don't want to come back. If they don't feel comfortable, it's not going to matter. So it's really, really important to make sure that you have that empathy. And that's a little bit of what I'm going to talk about today. Because the reality is, is people do business with, they'll come back to the clinic if, they'll build relationships with people that they know, they like, they trust, and of course, can communicate that well. So this is what I really want to talk about today because it's so important, um, not only with the patients, even before that, when you're going for your interviews and you're talking to the hiring manager, maybe it's HR, maybe it's the actual dentist um, of the practice, they want to feel a connection. Of course, they want to know that you, you have the skills. They're going to see that on the resume. They're going to see your credentials. But for you to be able to have a sincere connection and they feel your enthusiasm for the position, um, it will immediately build that no like trustability if you're able to develop rapport. And that's where communication comes in. So think about this. Communication is the multiplier of all skill. So if you're able to communicate properly your thoughts, your feelings, um, your skills, then you're going to be able to advance in almost everything that you do. And I'm not just talking professional, I'm talking personal as well. If you're able to communicate with your partners, with your kids, with your friends, with your spouse, with, you know, with your colleagues, then you're going to be able to help them get what they want and you're going to be able to get what you want as well. So what I'd like everybody to do, I should have prefaced this, but it's uh, hopefully everybody has a pen and a paper handy because I want some collaboration here. Of course, I'm all about empowerment and collaboration. So I want everybody to take a pen and paper and, or I don't know if you can draw it on your phone, that would be great. Um, pen and paper even better because it'd be really cool to actually see everybody's papers at the end of this. But uh, 
I want you to take a piece of paper and I'd like you to draw a vertical and a horizontal line on that paper, just like I have on the screen here. So it's gonna look like a T. And so what I'm doing now is I'm going to teach you guys how to figure out what your personality is. And then we're gonna talk about how you can recognize other people's personality in order to communicate better. So hopefully everybody has drawn this T on their page. And on the top, I want you to write outgoing. And then on the bottom, I want you to write reserved. And then on the left, you're gonna write task oriented. And then on the right, you're gonna write down people oriented. So you'll notice we have four quadrants here with four basic personality styles. And then in the top left quadrant, you're gonna write the letter D. It's okay if it's not color coordinated like I have here. Uh, the top right, you're gonna write the letter I. And you're gonna write the letter S in the bottom right. And then you're gonna write a C in the bottom left. Now you'll notice these are again, four quadrants with four basic personality styles. And of course there's many different personality profiles, leadership profiles. And this is just a very high level brief overview to give you an idea of what I mean. And so you can quickly kind of see what your overwhelming um, or your dominant rather personality is. I actually did this with my kids last night and it was hilarious because it was to a T and they loved it. So let's have a little bit of fun with this. So D stands for uh, dominance or driver. I, influential or influencer. C, compliant and S, steady. So you can write those down. If not, that's fine. Um, this is gonna be recorded so I can send it to, uh, to, to you guys as well so you can review it. And so 3% of the population has this characteristic, the dominance characteristic. 11% of the population has this characteristic, uh, the I, the influencer. 17% of the population has the compliant or the C characteristic. And then 69% of the population has the S characteristic. Now, what I want you guys to do is circle either whether at this point, point in time right now, and don't give too much thought about it, I want you to circle on the page whether you consider yourself to be more outgoing or reserved. So I want you to circle outgoing or reserved, one or the other. And again, there's going to be a, tom a dominant personality trait. And then a lot of people, of course, we have secondary and, and we all possess all of these personalities. But for the most part, this is going to be your dominant. So I want you to circle outgoing or reserved. Once you've done that, I want you to choose whether you feel at this particular time, whether you are more task oriented or people oriented. So again, you're gonna choose outgoing or reserved, circle that. And then on the left, there's task oriented. On the right, there's people oriented. So you want to circle that. Once you've done that, you're gonna notice what um, the, the two, so for example, if you circled outgoing and people oriented, then the middle letter would be I. If you circled outgoing and task oriented, then your letter would be D and so on and so forth, okay? So if you circled you, a D or sorry, task oriented and reserved, then you would be a C. If you circled reserved and people oriented, then you would predominantly be an S. So hopefully that's making sense to everybody and you've chosen your letter here. So now we're gonna talk about the characteristics of each of these letters. And after that, we're gonna talk about how you can communicate with those styles as well. So D typically would be active, fast paced, uh, very strong willed and determined very goal oriented, um, serious, sometimes controlling. They like to have control, uh, very competitive. These are extremely competitive, uh, can be a little bit confrontational. They don't mind confrontation. In fact, that feels like they feel like they have control when they're being confrontational and drivers make things happen because they're very action oriented. 
these drivers are very logical and very decisive. Now, typically you'll find these are drivers, um, any type of managers, department heads. Now, not always, but for the most part, um, drivers or the D type personality would be in those types of positions. So that's really important to know because you want to be able to learn how to communicate with a D if you're not a D. Now let's go on to the I. Uh, I's just, they're, a little, they're like D's, but they would rather go out and socialize than stay at home and do a project. <laughs> so I's are more, they're outgoing, they're charismatic, very enthusiastic, very expressive. Um, typically will dominate a conversation. They enjoy the limelight and they're usually very fun to be around, very animated. You can usually tell when an eye walks into a room because people are generally attracted to that charisma. All right, so the S. Now, if you circled S, you're probably a very good listener. Um, people like to talk to you, people like to tell you things, usually supportive, very compassionate, um, sometimes passive, more soft-spoken, so almost the opposite of a D. Um, the S's are a little more resistant to change, uh, likes detailed directions. The S, they prefer to follow and not lead. So are you noticing the contrast between the D and the S? So it's on the opposites for a reason. You, these are all kind of opposites of each other. So the S's are very, very different than the D's. And this is important to know because if you are an S and you're communicating with somebody like a D, you probably don't like the D um, energy. It prob probably, unless you're aware, and this is all about making everybody aware of their own personalities so that you can understand other people, which is going to help you to communicate better. A lot of people mistake other people's communication style for um, whether they like them or not. Really, it has nothing to do with whether people are like, you're, uh, like you or not, usually. It's that, they, it's that they have a very different personality style and they just don't know how to communicate with you. So if this, what I'm hoping is that this is going to create um, an awareness for yourself and other people around you. So that's why I'm pointing out that this is very different from the D. They prefer to follow, they don't like to lead. So somebody who's a D may not understand an S and why they don't step up and wanna be the leader. They don't understand that because they're the complete opposite personality. Um, S's are typically a little slower. They're a little more methodical, they're not hurried. As opposed to the D, they're very quick, very decisive. They like to get things done. And not to say that the S's don't, the S's just take their time in doing it. It's kind of like slow and steady wins the race. Uh, and S's, S's are typically more conservative. Now getting over to the C, um, C's are typically information gathering. C's love, love, love data. <laughs> okay. Um, and again, this is, this is not like the D or even the I. The D's and the I's don't love a lot of data. They like the bigger picture. The C's are very analytical and sometimes overly analytical. I like to say analysis paralysis. You'll sometimes feel like that. If you ever feel like that about somebody, I guarantee you they're a C personality. Um, C's are very talented, very, very creative, um, usually very reserved and very introspective. Of course, they prefer to be alone. Um, a lot of dentists are actually C's. I do this talk um, in these person personality profiles in universities all across um, Canada with the dental students and the over overwhelming character is a C for dentists. I'll tell you that I, I, I see that in every single, um, every single class that I go into. So that's really good to know so that you know how to communicate properly with the dentist who you're going to be working with. So if you can understand them a little bit better um, and communicate to them at their level, then you're gonna get along famously and you're gonna be a huge support. Um, C is very perfectionist, very meticulous, um, of course, and that makes total sense for dentists. And now I'm not saying that all dentists are C's, but I'm saying that the overwhelming amount um, typically are the C uh, profile. Typically they see the problems, not necessarily the solutions. Um, C's are very loyal, very, very sensitive. 
So that's really, really important to know. So again, I want you to kind of have a look at this. Maybe you want to take a screenshot. Again, this is going to be recorded. We'll send this out again. But um, you'll see that these, these are very contrasting. So again, if the S and the D are communicating, they're going to have problems communicating because they don't necessarily understand each other. The I's and the C's, there's going to be problems in communication as well because the C's are very, very analytical. Um, sometimes, that, again, that analysis paralysis where the I is very kind of outgoing, charismatic. Um, they dominate the conversation and they just want the high levels. They don't need they don't get themselves bothered in the minutia of the details. And the C's don't understand that. So sometimes the C's may not understand the I's or even there may be a little bit of distrust because they'll see an I as being, you know, sometimes too much fluff or they're not being truthful because they're not giving the details when in fact that's not true at all. It's just their character. So what I want to, um, you know, really hone in on today is using the gift of your personality to optimize your communication. So everybody here hopefully went through the exercise and you have your letter. Again, some people, um, their letter will, will be different in a work environment and their letter will be different in a home environment. Some people will carry that through everything they do, but a lot of people are a little bit different they're a little bit different. Out. So again, take this with a little grain of salt um, and recognize that we all possess all these characteristics, but there's usually going to be a predominant, uh, one, uh, predominant one. So let's use that gift. This is a gift. There's no letter that's better than the other. You know, I did this activity with my, my kids again last night and my daughter's a D. <laughs> she's a driver. She's very quick. She's very, you know, give it to me straight. She wants the answers now. My son <laughs> is an S. Uh, so again, if you guys can make sure that you're all on mute here so we don't have feedback, thank you. My daughter, um, my son is an S. And they, those two, they're at it all the time. My daughter wants things quickly. She, you know, she needs the answers yesterday. Whereas my son, you know, he doesn't get her. He's like, no, she, she's way too fast. She's way too loud. I can't stand it. It drives him crazy. So it was really funny to see their response because they, they, they started to understand each other a little bit more and didn't take it as necessarily an attack on them liking them or not. You know, they always think that they don't, you know, my sister doesn't like me or my brother doesn't like me. It's not that. It's just that the communication is very different and we need to be aware of that. So let's use your gift of your communication so that you can optimize every single uh, relationship that you have. So I'm sure all of us, if you're a D, um, typically Ds love that they're a D. <laughs> you know, they're drivers. I like to get things done. My, my daughter was bragging all night about her being a D. And uh, of course, my son was rolling his eyes. But um, how do you communicate with a D style? There's only 3% of the population that's a D style. Uh, but we still need to know how to communicate with the Ds because more than likely they're going to be the, the owners um, or in those management positions. So it really, you need to understand these styles. So what do we do? Um, be direct, be brief and get to the point. They don't want any fluff. They want the answers right away. Um, no need to over uh, dramatize anything. Just be direct. They, they, they need to have uh, the point, get to the point right away. Focus on the task, stick to business, um, use a results-oriented approach. They want results. That's, that's one of the things about the Ds. This is typically why they're in those CEO or those high-level management positions is because they are really looking for uh, results. So give them the results. Identify opportunities, not challenges. Uh, opportunities as challenges, but not uh, problems. So identify the opportunities. So for example, during this whole pandemic um, with, with uh, COVID, of course there's challenges, of course there's a lot of uncertainty, but there's always a silver lining, lining. So if you're communicating with a D, show them the opportunities and don't focus on the problems. Uh, they like to win. I'm not saying that just you know, let them win all the time, but you know, if you're communicating with a D style, 
sometimes it's okay to, uh, to, to let them think that they're winning. <laughs> Unless there's something that you're really, uh, really, really intent on and it's going uh, against the grain, for the most part, Ds like to win. Offer solutions and alternatives. Again, if there's uh, challenges, focus on the opportunities and offer the solution and be very direct with it. Again, there's no need to beat around the bush with the D style. Uh, touch on the high points, don't overuse data and um, be aware of personal space. Ds like their personal space. Uh, do not be emotional and don't dominate. They don't like uh, too much emotion. No need to dominate the conversation. They typically like to dominate the conversation. Um, and act quickly. They like to decide fast. So what's really important, stay on this slide here, is think about if you are in an interview with uh, a D style. And you're going to be able to recognize this because the D style typically is very poignant. They're on time. They're task oriented. They speak a little bit quicker. Um, they, their posture is usually a little bit grander. Uh, they're very uh, usually louder. Usually Ds are much louder than an S or a C. Uh, if you're talking to an S, you're going to talk a little bit slower. If you're talking to a D, you speak a little bit quicker. And the way that you can do that is take their lead. So if somebody's interviewing you and their posture is up like this and they're sitting like this, you kind of want to follow that. And this is getting a little bit into NLP or neuro linguistic programming. I won't get into that today, but this falls along the side of people like people who are like them or who they want to be like. Okay. So I'm not saying change who you are. I'm saying that you want to meet people at the level that they're at in order to communicate better. Because if you're able to properly communicate with somebody, then you're able to deliver your point better. And this, by the way, for all the parents out there, is important with the kids. If you can communicate at their level, they're gonna hear what you have to say. As opposed to having a completely different style, they're gonna shut you down. So it's important to recognize D style, be you know to the point, direct, Speak a little bit quicker, no need to go slow. They can't stand that. He'll turn them off totally. And uh, make sure that um, speaking a little bit louder, if you're speaking with a very mousy voice, that is All right, so next one, how to communicate with an I style. So this is somebody, um, if, again, if you're in an interview or you know, you're with patients, how are you going to talk to this style of personality? So these styles typically like uh, time for socializing and they like you to ask about family. You know, how are you doing? How's the family? How are the babies? You know, they appreciate this type of thing because they're a little more emotional. Um, they prefer you to lighten up, have a little more fun. Um, again, ask for feelings and opinions. That's important to them in building that trust there. You know, how do you feel about this? How do you feel about this procedure? How are you feeling after your cleaning today? How are you, you know, things like this, that kind of language is really important. It's not as important for the D style. The D is kind of like, let's get it done. What are the results? And I'm ready to, what do I need to do next? And let's go. Whereas the I style, they need to have a little more comfort level and uh, feel like you care. Smile and be animated. The I style, very, very positive. They like the smiles, um, big personality. So really, really important. And again, if that's not your style, that's okay. I'm not saying to change it. I'm saying to recognize it and perhaps smile a little bit more if that's not your typical thing to do. Uh, create a fun environment. That's always important for the I style. Uh, be friendly and warm. Do not ignore. I styles do not like to be ignored. And again, this can be applied in all works of life, in work, personal, at home. A lot of us are home right now with our kids and our spouses. And I don't know about you, but sometimes I'm going a little bit crazy and I just have to, you know, breathe and realize that my style is very different than the other people in my house. And if I can recognize and be a little more cognizant of that, then everybody's gonna get along better. And this is really important when you're working in a small dental space. Um, expressing enth enthusiasm, I style loves enthusiasm. They feel if, um, if you're not enthusiastic, then, then you're you know, dead in the water. It's really, really important to you know, up-level your enthusiasm when talking to an I and a D as well. 
let them speak, let them finish speaking. So again, if you're in an interview, for example, um, I mean, this goes without saying anyway, you always want to make sure that you're allowing the person who's interviewing to speak. Let them finish the question before you interject. Very, very important with all styles. I mean, that's just a sign of respect, but especially for the eye style. Uh, recognition. Recognition is really important for the eye style as well. They like to be recognized for their achievements and it could be the littlest thing. So, you know, maybe um, they did a great job, you know, great job, you know, making that patient feel comfortable or um, great. If you're talking to the patient, great job. Um, you know, you were a great patient today. You did an amazing job. You know, how do you feel? So again, you're giving them a little bit of recognition and then asking them how they're feeling as well. If you're talking to um, maybe uh, a, a dentist who's interviewing you, if, if you give them a little bit of uh, <laughs> recognition on, you know, I found your job posting, it was really well written, or I've done a little bit of research on your office and it looks absolutely fabulous. Your staff looks fabulous. I love the way your website's laid out. I love, you know, the location. So if you're giving a little bit of recognition um, and make sure that it's all true. You want to be honest and sincere because if you're not sincere, then they will notice that as well. You might as well not do it if you're not going to be sincere. So recognition doesn't have to be this big, huge production. It could be the littlest thing. For example, even with kids, yesterday, my son helped me with bringing the groceries. And at the end of the day, you know, I gave him a hug and I said, thanks so much. I really appreciate your help. I wouldn't have been able to do that without you. So the littlest thing will make the biggest difference and the law of reciprocity will kick in and people will want to help you going forward. Again, I still speak about people and feelings. That's really, really important with the I style. Now, moving on to the S style. This is, um, again, polar opposite of the D. Uh, be very patient and build trust with the S style. If you are in an interview or if you're speaking with a patient who has an S style and you come in all loud and bold and speaking really quickly, the S style is going to go, whoa, 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 wait a minute. I'm not feeling comfortable here. I'm going to totally shut down and I don't trust you. So the Ds need to know that, hey, you know what? I need to kind of tone it down a little bit when I'm speaking with the S or the C style. So build, be patient with the S style. Build the trust. It's going to take time. They don't want to be sold. You know, if you're doing any type of, um, uh, if you're a treatment coordinator, you're doing, you know, uh, offering treatments, um, make sure that, that you're not giving all the information too directly, too quickly. They want it. They need to digest the information and be a little more soft-spoken when you're delivering that information. Draw out their opinions. Um, they like to have that collaboration there. Present issues logically. Relax, allow time for discussion again. So if you're just going in there and it's a one-sided conversation, they're not going to appreciate that. They want time for open discussion in a very kind of slow, logical, methodical way. Show solutions that are going to benefit him or her. So, of course, if um, you're talking to a patient, you're going to talk about the benefits of, um, of the treatment that you're talking about, for example, um, or that you're offering. You're going to speak in a very, in a slower, kind of um, milder tone, as opposed to loud, bold, and really quickly. They're not going to appreciate that at all. And again, you can recognize that by um, when you're talking to them, they're usually they're talking to you in the style that they prefer so again meeting people where they're at s styles um, they like you to clearly define what's expected of them or responsibilities very very important involve him or her in the planning they like to be involved the s style is very very supportive they like to be involved a lot of volunteers are s's um, a lot of people in the healthcare are s's they want to give support don't need to be the leader. They want to be a part of something bigger and feel like they are supporting others. Um, and they, 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 you know, they expect the same from other people. Slow down your approach, provide the information that they need. They need the details. They need the information. As opposed to the D or the I, 
You know, if you just give like a task, the D, they'll get it done. They don't need to all the information. They don't need all the details. With the S style, they want to make sure that they're doing everything right and that they have all the details. Now, this is very important for managerial position. And a lot of you, a lot of you will probably end up um, having a lot of tasks or a lot of um, responsibilities in the office. So whether you're an assistant or a hygienist, you may end up finding yourselves in a leadership uh, or, or some type of management role down the road. This is really important to understand these styles so that you can communicate uh, better and also um, help to empower your team more. So if you know that an S style needs more detail, make sure that those details are written out clearly. If you know that you're working with a D, you just give them a task and they'll get it done. They'll feel patronized if you're giving them every last detail, right? Whereas the S and the C, and I'll talk about, they need the details. They want to know exactly what's expected of them. Uh, and again, secure the commitment step-by-step. Step. Again, processes. And in, in the dental offices, you'll have manuals and processes and procedures and all that kind of stuff should be available to you as well. The Ds, the Ds probably won't look at it <laughs> or they'll skim it. We'll, uh, we'll read every single detail as will the C style. All right, so C style, um, they love data, data and facts. Again, I told you that dentists are typically, a lot of dentists are C style. Um, typically you have programmers, accountants, um, a lot of people who do independent work are C style. Um, IT professionals, very much C style. They like to, they, they love the data, they love the, the facts, devils are in the details, right? Um, examine an argument from all sides. Very, very uh, important with the C style. They don't like the one-sided. Again, a D and a C, you know, communicating with them, there, there, there may be some uh, clash because the Ds would be very, you know, one-sided, this is what I need done. Whereas a C style is like, well, wait a minute, I'm gonna analyze all the details first, make sure everything's fair and everybody's happy, and then we're gonna go from there. Keep on task, proceed very logically. So again, if you're um, being interviewed by a C-style, they're, they're, they're gonna wanna know all the details. They'll probably ask you more detail-oriented questions. And as they do that, you're gonna wanna give specific details when you answer. If you're talking to an, a D, for example, or even an I, they're, they're not gonna be as detailed with their questions. Um, disagree with the facts, not the person. So C-style bases a lot of their decisions on the facts. They study, they analyze the facts. It's not about the emotion. Whereas the I, you'll notice on the disc profile, the I is complete opposite of that. A lot of times the I makes decisions based on emotion and feeling and gut. The C doesn't do that. So sometimes the C may not trust the I <laughs> because they feel that, um, you know, they're not being truthful or honest, which actually isn't the case at all. It's just that they have very different communication styles. Uh, focus on quality with the C. Very, very big on quality, which makes sense why a lot of dentists are Cs, right? They need, they're working in very tiny, you know, all of you guys are working in very tiny space. Really, really important that, um, that, 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 they focus on quality and all the little details. <laughs> it's a good thing. Avoid uh, untested solutions and use proven ideas. Again, facts, details. Respect personal space, the C style. Um, more than not, they prefer to be alone. They prefer to work. You know, they, they would rather stay in and research rather than go out to a party. They're perfectly happy with doing that. And they, you know, they don't, they don't need a lot of people around them. Be very patient and slow with the C style. Um, now slow, I'm not, not saying, you know, just slow and steady paced. So if you're talking again to somebody in an interview or a patient and their C style or an S style, you're going to be a little bit slower with them, a little more methodical, a little more logical, as opposed to a, a D or an I style. And no need to talk about personal issues. They don't necessarily, they don't see the point of it. It's not fact, so why talk about it? Whereas the I, they love to talk about that stuff. You know, how is your family? You know, how is she doing? How is their, you know, their wedding? All this kind of stuff. The C's don't necessarily, not that they don't care, they just don't see the validity um, in it at all. 
So recognizing that, you know, if you are an I style, then I would limit that, that information or that conversation. Um, explain things very, very carefully, very important to them. And so those are all this, the styles here. So the D, the I, the S, the C. Now I can get into so much more detail. This is just a very kind of high level of what that looks like. But I want you to think about um, these situations and I want you to do a little bit of an experiment perhaps at home. All of us are at home right now. And, um, you know, we're with our families, we're with our kids. And so I want you to start thinking about what their personalities might be, or even do this little, uh, this little test on them. I will guarantee you that your kids will love it. Most people love to find out what they are. People always want to know what they are, and then they don't care about other people. Well, the point of this is not just to know uh, what you are. The point is to start recognizing um, other people's personality styles understanding what yours is and how you can use that to communicate better. That's really the whole point of this exercise is improving your communication style. So what I'd like everybody to do is an experiment. Uh, once you're finished with, uh, with, with, with your class today is I want you to with somebody or whoever's in your house is if you think that your spouse or your, you know, your kids are a D um, or an I or an S or a C, determine what they are. And I want you to treat your partner with the same energy that they led with. Okay. So again, we're meeting people where they're at, especially if you're having a lot of conflict. And I know a lot of people are these days, everybody's in tight spaces. I want to kind of remember that if, if something's not working, then change it. Don't continue doing the same thing and it's not working. You know, I know, especially if you're dealing with people that just don't seem to hear you, well, there's a reason they're not. So maybe let's change our approach and let's meet people where they're at and engage with them at the same energy. Okay, I want you to think about that. So think about the people in your house. And if you have a D in the house, a driver, ask them what you can do to get something done for them. Okay, so this again is an experiment and see how they react. Okay, so again, try to spend the day or at least if you can't do the whole day, try an hour <laughs> and, uh, and meet them where they're at with their energy. Change your mindset, change, um, change the focus to them and what their needs are. And it's amazing to see what can happen. So if you have a D in the house, ask them if you can get something done, you know, if they've got any tasks. What are some tasks that I can help you get done? Or is there anything that, that needs to be done by the end of the day or be, by the end of the week? If you can kind of create some sort of goal or ask them what needs to be done in a certain amount of time, they will love that. And if you're not typically used to asking that, they're probably gonna wonder what the heck is going on. Uh, but I'm curious to see what happens. I, I'd love for you to do this exercise, it's super fun. If you have an eye in the house, um, have some fun. Now, obviously you're not gonna invite them to a restaurant or maybe, you know, suggest, ordering from skip the dishes or, um, you know, making dinner together tonight and hanging out with your friends online, do a zoom call. You can go on zoom and, you know, get a, get a free trial, do something like that. Do something fun or go out for a walk and maybe do like a curbside hello to one of the neighbors. Um, initiate something fun. If you have an I style in the family, or if you're finding that there's any tension going on um, in the household, do something or communicate to them in the way that they communicate to you. If you have an S in the home, um, I would suggest maybe giving them an extra long hug and telling them how much you appreciate their support. So for example, my son's an S and uh, I gave, he loves hugs. I gave him multiple hugs yesterday and you know, before bed and I told him how much I appreciated him and how much his support with helping me with the groceries meant to me. And he just melted. So I would uh, recommend hugs, appreciation, and thank them for support. S's are huge support people. Um, let them know that you appreciate their support and uh, see how you can support them. And then a C style, uh, <laughs> send them a text or an email and ask them if they want to do a crossword or play sudo Sudoku or, or something kind of 
analytical or maybe chess or something um, and engage them that way and see what their response is. So guys, this is a very kind of simple experiment, but something that you can do um, really every day. Be conscious of who you are, be conscious of the people around you, be conscious and aware. If you start getting into that space of awareness, um, it's gonna create habits that are gonna trickle into every area of your life. And I promise you that, that it, it will make all the difference in the world. And really the final tip here is you really can't grow yourself until you know yourself. So first step is self-awareness. All right, guys. So of course you can always contact me and my team. Uh, we've got our website up there. We've got our email. We've got a, a corporate line as well. Of course we're on social media all the time. Um, always posting something, always posting, you know, webinars and events like VIX as well. Um, we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, we're on LinkedIn. I would love to hear from you. Of course, I would love to be able to help all of you find your dream job, your dream career. And of course, even if you've got something lined up already, like Vic said, you guys are in high demand. Um, really, the world is your oyster. You guys have all the opportunities in the world, um, which is why I really want you to focus in on where you see yourself working. What type of team do you want to pair up with? What are your core values? Um, what's your personality? What are their personalities? How is that going to fit on a larger scale? Where do you see yourself in 5, 10, 15 years? What does that look like? And work backwards to see how you're going to get there to have the most success that you can. And that's truly what I love about this profession is I get to be a little small part um, of your success. And if I have the opportunity to do that, then uh, that there's nothing more that would make me happy. Whether you, you know, join the Inspire Network and allow us to help you find your opportunity or not, we want to help you. Reach out to us. Um, let's have a conversation and, um, and let's, all, let's all get into the workforce and, and have, have fun and be successful. Mm -hmm.